I thought I'd finished making GT710 related content for 2022, but it seems there's still more to be said. More depths to be plumbed with this underwhelming display adapter. You see, I made this short video where I said that a 5 year old Intel iGPU was equal or better at gaming than a GT710, and now I guess I have to back that up. I made that initial short to warn those who didn't know any better against buying pre-built with GT710s that were being advertised as gaming PCs, but some people seem to miss that part. Wrong, they said. That's cap. Which is a phrase I had to look up. Anyway, the point is, some people have difficulty believing that the GT710 could possibly be outperformed by Intel's notoriously terrible integrated graphics, and rather casually call me a liar like I have some grudge against the GT710, or get paid for promoting obsolete Intel CPUs. Well, I wasn't going to let that stand. To defend my honour, I have the Intel i7-7700 with integrated HD630 graphics, along with 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 2666, because the system failed to boot when I tried running it any higher. The CPU is running in an ASRock Z270 motherboard, with all the games running from SSDs. The GT710 numbers come from my previous video, in which I compared the DDR3 and GDDR5 versions of the GT710 on a Ryzen 5 5600G based system. The irony that its iGPU is more powerful than either GPU being tested is not lost on me. To give the 710 even more of a fighting chance, I'll be tossing the results from the slower DDR3 model in favour of the very slightly better GDDR5 version. Starting with Fortnite, and it's not a resounding win for the HD630, but it still counts. The iGPU can pull an average of 36 FPS in performance mode at 1080 lowest settings. The GT710 loses by about 3 FPS, though picking a winner is like deciding which species of cactus you'd most like to use as toilet paper, it's gonna hurt either way. Though. If you have no other option, you should at least turn on some resolution scaling to avoid dying like a punk when the frame rate drops. GTA 5 next, and arguably this is a tie, with averages on the HD 630 and GT 710 less than one frame apart at 1080 normal quality. But look at the 1%s, the iGPU scores about 20% higher at the low end, and while this is still too low, and both GPUs would benefit from some resolution scaling, a win is a win. Okay, things are getting a bit more serious now. I've tested the GT710 in Valheim numerous times since the game first came out, and the two just don't go together. Even though the game has Unreal Tournament era graphics, the Nvidia display adapter only scores in the teens at 720 low quality. At the same settings, the HD630 walks away with this one, coming in at almost 30 FPS on average. Valorant is my preferred title for judging CPU performance, as it doesn't take a particularly strong GPU to hit 150 FPS or higher, even at 1080 high settings. Of course, we're not talking about powerful GPUs. The HD630 only manages 80 FPS by dropping quality to low, and while this is a decent frame rate in general, it's a bit on the low side for Valorant, and the 1% are frankly unacceptable. That is, until you compare the GT710, which. <sighs> I don't know. I've tested two versions of this card in this game, at least three times, on three systems. I don't know why I'm surprised anymore. Splitgate is a little more visually demanding than most low-spec esports titles, and I find with GPUs of this calibre, I have to drop resolution scaling to 50% in order to get a decent FPS and that comes at a heavy cost in terms of visibility. I'm not saying that either of these is a particularly playable experience, but the HD630 is the least worst, pushing over 60 FPS on average, while the GT710 fails to hit 50. Finally, a win for the GT710. It's less than 10% in the Nvidia card's favour, but 
like I said before, a win is a win. At 1080 performance, the HD630 only scores an average of 45 FPS in Rocket League, compared to the GT710's 49 FPS. 1% lows remain stronger on the iGPU, and I've come to suspect that the GT710's memory bandwidth might be to blame, as this game is one of the few that saw bigger gains from the GDDR5 card compared to the DDR3. Overwatch 2 requires dropping to lowest settings and 50% scaling on both GPUs, but it's kinda sorta playable. Maybe. While the HD630 loses out in average FPS by less than 2 frames, it has much lower 1% scores. On the other hand, I was actually able to complete a deathmatch round, which is more than I could say for the GT710. I tried twice, and both times the game crapped out with the same error message. This problem may be unique to my card, or maybe because the 471.11 drivers I'm forced to use are from way before Overwatch 2 was released, but I just can't get the game to work for more than a couple of minutes. <laughs> uh, I kind of threw this in as a joke. The GT710 can't run Elden Ring because it's limited to the DX11 feature set and doesn't meet the game's basic functional requirement of DX12. The HD630 might not be a good GPU, but at least it can launch stuff the GT710 can't. I didn't expect the iGPU to actually perform well, and yet somehow it even managed to fail to meet that low bar. After a few seconds at 1280x720 low, effectively in slow motion, I was dumped to the menu screen and told that I wasn't going to be able to play online because of my frame rate. Fair enough, I thought, but after playing offline for a further 5 minutes or so, the PC locked up entirely and required a hard reset. I guess that means... no, the HD630 can't play Elden Ring either. So, is this a slam dunk? Does every iGPU from the last 5 years beat every GT710? Well, no. You could make a pretty strong argument that the GT710 is one of the easiest cards to overclock, and that doing so can give a 20-25% to performance boost just by dragging a couple of sliders. That's not going to fix Overwatch 2, Valorant, Valheim or Splitgate, but it makes a night and day difference in Rocket League, GTA 5 and Fortnite, and you don't need to be Jay's tech tips to do it. On the other hand, some would point out that the HT630 might perform better with faster RAM, and a CPU with a better memory controller could get more performance from DDR4 3200 or 3600. Neither of these points really matter. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to game on either of these GPUs. I don't know your personal circumstances. If you're in dire straits and one of these is all that you have, then by all means, do what you can to get a good experience out of them. Nobody's mocking you for using one for gaming, or for using one as a display adapter for your home server. These videos aren't written to hurt or ridicule you, but to help others. Unscrupulous sellers are listing overpriced, quote-unquote, gaming PCs with GT710s, and people are clearly falling for it. A £200 gaming PC from Amazon with a 2nd gen i5 and GT710, even a 2GB one, is a travesty. You could spend that same money on a refurbished X office machine with a 7th gen Intel i7 or later, and get better general performance, a longer lifespan with better reliability, and equal or better gaming performance. That being said, an even better choice, specifically for gaming on a £200 budget, would be a £100 pre-built with a 6th or 7th gen i5, and a small second-hand graphics card like a AMD WX3100 or maybe a low-profile GTX 1050 Ti if you're lucky. Just please, for the love of Gaben, don't buy a GT710 for gaming. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>